Hello friends, welcome to the short tutorial from Ilopathology. Today's topic is chemical carcinogenesis. The learning outcomes for today's topic is understanding what carcinogenesis is. We will look into the historical aspect of carcinogenesis. We will understand in detail about chemical carcinogenesis with, with the steps involved and then we will list out various chemical carcinogens and end with knowing what are all the tests we do for carcinogenesis. Now, what is carcinogenesis? It's also referred to as oncogenesis, which just means mechanism of induction of tumors. Now, what is a carcinogen? A carcinogen is a substance or an agent which can induce cancer. It could be a chemical carcinogen, it could be a physical carcinogen or a biological carcinogen. Now, today's topic is all about chemical carcinogenesis. Now, let us understand the historical significance of chemical carcinogenesis. It's really appropriate to give credit to those discoveries, you know, which has led to the advancements in understanding the concepts of carcinogenesis. The first and foremost, um, way, way back in 1761, Dr. John Hill, a, a London physician, he was the one who observed the association of nasal cancer among tobacco snuff users in uh, men. In the, year, in the year 1775, Percival Pott, an English surgeon, he was the one who found the increased incidence of scrotal cancers in chimney sweepers in London. In the year 1915, Yamagiwa and Ishikawa, two great Japanese pathologists, what they did was they applied multiple topical uh, applications of coal tar to rabbit ears and then they induced squam cell carcinomas. They were the ones who actually first demonstrated that a chemical could produce cancer in animals. In 1930s, Kenawe, a British pathologist, showed for the first time that polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons such as dibenzanthracene are tumorigenic in mouse skin. In 1940s, James and Elizabeth Miller, they are oncologists, they were oncologists, they were the first to find out the relationship between metabolic activation and tumorigenesis, which we'll be studying in detail in the subsequent slides. Now, the basic mechanism of chemical carcinogenesis is induction of mutation. It is a multi-step process which involves initiation, promotion and then progression. Now, what is this initiation? It's basically, see, whenever the cells are exposed to a carcinogenic agent and that cell will become an irreversibly altered cell, okay? So, this irreversibly altered cell can give rise to tumor. This is called initiation. The initiators involved are, it can be direct acting carcinogens or indirect acting carcinogens. See, the direct acting carcinogens, they don't need any metabolic activation to become carcinogenic, whereas indirect acting carcinogens, they need metabolic activation to become carcinogenic. Now, what do you mean by metabolic activation? Basically, these chemicals, that means the indirect acting carcinogens, they are activated in the liver by the monooxygenases of cytochrome P450 in the endoplasmic reticulum of hepatocytes, okay? So that is when the metabo metabolically activated product of this indirect acting carcinogens, they are now referred to as ultimate carcinogen. So that means the indirect acting carcinogens are something like uh, precursor carcinogen, which when metabolically activated, they become ultimate carcinogen, okay? Now let us understand the steps of uh, carcinogenesis in detail. So a carcinogen, a carcinogen uh, can be directly acting carcinogen or indirectly acting carcinogen. So these are basically initiators. So what do they do? They attack the target cell. Okay. So when they attack the target cell, that is when the reactive electrophiles are formed. Okay. Now what are these reactive electrophiles? These reactive electrophiles are electron deficient. Okay, they like to bind to the electron rich portions of the cell like DNA and RNA. That is when they cause permanent DNA damage. Okay, and this cell with a permanent damage to DNA is known as initiated cell. Okay, the whole process is called initiation. So you should understand that this initiation process is very fast and this is irreversible. Okay, it is transmitted to the daughter cells. Now, what happens to this initiated cell? With the help of promoters, there will be clonal proliferation of these altered or initiated cells. Okay. Now, what are these promoters? So, these promoters are forbol esters, hormones, phenols and drugs. So, once these, you know, they encourage clonal proliferation of altered cells, these altered cells are now preneoplastic or uh, benign 
cells so this whole process is called promotion so you should understand that this promotion step is not mutagenic it only increases cell proliferation okay uh, one one of the most important thing here is that the promoter must be present for a longer duration okay it could be in in weeks it could be in months or years in order to be effective okay and it is always reversible this particular step is always reversible okay now these pre neoplastic cells are benign clones of cell you know they will turn into malignancy eventually and this process is known as progression now what happens in progression is that whenever there is a lot and lot of clonal proliferation that means to say that it is more prone for development of more and more mutations whenever there is more and more mutation that means there is more and more damage so basically it's because of the genetic and epigenetic mechanism where the benign clone progresses to malignant clone of cells okay here the cell proliferation is independent from the presence of stimulus and this is irreversible okay it means faster growth there are features of invasion there are features of metastasis all these things occurs in this particular stage of progression now let us understand the various experiments which are which have which have been done to demonstrate the initiation and promote okay here the time is represented in the horizontal axis so now imagine that this is a initiator so initiator means it could be either directly acting or indirectly acting carcinogen attacks a target cell at this particular point of time okay and then there is nothing happening over a period of time that means there will be no tumor at all now the second scenario where there is an initiator and then you have promoters so you have promoters of sufficient quantity over a period of time and then this can result in the formation of tumor so i hope you understood that you need to have initiator and then this initiator is the one which causes the target cell to be uh, altered and then they are called as initiated cell okay and these initiated cells only upon the action by the promoters they develop tumors this is another scenario so it is uh, it is not that the target cell or the initiated cell has to be exposed to promoter immediately okay there can be some considerable time gap in spite of uh, these cells being exposed after a sufficient period of time still there is formation of tumor that is because the initiated cell is a permanently damaged cell okay it now becomes a sort of memory cells so promoter can be applied at any stage in the life this is another scenario where you have i mean the cells are exposed only for the promoters then there will be no tumor now promoter first and then the initiator still no tumor see with these experiments what do we understand we understand that there has to be exposure of the target cell by initiator first and then there will be exposure of the initiated cell to the promoters it's only then there will be formation of tumor okay now let us know what are the various carcinogens so we know that the chemical carcinogens can be direct acting agents or indirect acting agents what are these directly acting agents these can be alkylating agents like anti cancer drugs or they can be acylating agents like dimethyl carbamyl chloride these are the ones which are implicated in the development of leukemias and lymphomas Now, what are these indirect acting carcinogens these are the ones which need metabolic activation for them to be effective these are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons aromatic amines and azodes naturally occurring products and miscellaneous uh, drugs so what are these polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons they are seen in tobacco they are seen in smoke fossil fuel soot tar industrial and atmospheric pollutants they are basically anthracenes benzapyrene and methylcholanthrene okay the tumors which are implicated in these uh, uh, are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons the most common example being the lung cancer by smoking the aromatic amines and azodes they are beta naphthalamine benzidine butterello scarlet red these are uh, the ones which are used in dye industries and they are implicated in bladder and liver cancers naturally occurring products like al- aflatoxin okay it's basically a fungus which grows in grains and this is the one which is implicated in the development of hepatocellular carcinoma beetle nut chewing they are implicated in the development of oral cavity cancers miscellaneous like vinyl chloride which is implicated in the development of hemangiosarcomas of the liver asbestos in bronchogenic carcinomas and arsenic in basal cell carcinomas Now let us know what are the tests for chemical carcinogenicity there are two kinds of tests one it could be experimental induction of cancers 
and two tests for mutagenicity and this is the most famous ames test or ames test okay now what is this experimental induction it's basically you know you apply a chemical on to a animal model or an animal okay repeated application of this chemical you can induce cancers the major disadvantage of experimental induction being a test for chemical carcinogenicity is that it is prolonged and it's expensive okay moreover you cannot apply these results to humans okay because these are done on animal models you cannot apply these to humans because you know every species react differently to a different carcinogen okay now then you have another test called test for mutagenicity which is also referred to as the ames test now bruce ames is a professor of biochemistry and molecular biology at the university of california he was the one who devised this test for mutagenicity in the year 1974 it's an easy and inexpensive way to measure the mutagenicity of the chemical ames test does not determine if the chemical is carcinogenic so what is a funda the funda is the rational is that the greater than 90% of all chemicals have been shown to be carcinogenic in subsequent animal tests so how do we do this ames test okay we use the bacterium salmonella typhimurium okay this is the one which carries a defective gene or a mutant gene where it is unable to synthesize the amino acid histidine from the ingredients in the culture medium okay so this particular salmonella typhimurium is also referred to as histidine negative salmonella typhimurium however some types of mutations including this can be reversed okay and that is called a bat mutation where the gene can regain its function these revertents are able to grow in a medium which lacks histidine so this is the basic principle of ames test okay so what happens here so we will understand ames test in detail so this is a strain of salmonella typhimurium which is histidine negative that means they require histidine for their growth okay now you have a culture plate with growth medium so this growth medium lacks histidine so obviously when this typhimurium is inoculated in this into this culture medium then there will be no growth because this growth medium do not have histidine and they need histidine for the growth okay now for this test you also add rat liver extract that is because we have one this is basically an optional thing we know that some chemicals like indirect acting chemicals or carcinogens they need metabolic activation for it to be carcinogenic okay so that is why it's always good to have rat liver extract in the test included along with strain of salmonella typhimurium so the mixture of these two that is the strain of salmonella typhimurium which is histidine negative and the rat liver extract is inoculated onto the culture plate with the growth medium which lacks histidine okay now what do you do next you create a well in the culture plate and then place the chemical to be tested in the well this chemical diffuses okay now then after this you just incubate now two things can happen one imagine if this chemical is mutagenic or if this chemical can be able to induce mutations in this particular strain of hd negative so this mutation can be reversed so the strain of salmonella typhimurium which is histidine negative becomes histidine positive so even though this medium do not have histidine the mutated strain or the revertent strain can grow in this medium okay if the chemical to be tested is mutagenic you can see numerous colonies of mutated salmonella typhimurium it's a revertent now histidine positive okay they still can grow in a medium lacking histidine that means to say that the chemical which was supposed to be tested is mutagenic if it is not mutagenic then you hardly see any growth okay it is either negative growth or you can see some colonies here and there okay now you can ask me a question that there is no mutation how can you expect colonies to be grown here that is the, the reason for this is some strains of salmonella typhimurium can undergo spontaneous mutation okay so this spontaneous mutation do not require the addition of any chemicals or carcinogens so that is the reason why you can expect some colonies to be grown but note that the colonies grown here and the colonies grown here is entirely different here it is studded with colonies whereas here it's only occasional one or two rare um, areas of colonies
so this is how you do a test for mutagenicity and this is called amis test so that completes this short tutorial on chemical carcinogenesis where we understood what a chemical carcinogen means we also understood the pathogenesis of chemical carcinogenesis or multi step process of chemical carcinogenesis we uh, you know studied in detail about amis test which is one of the important test for mutagenicity thank you very much for watching if you want to uh, know more about this topic as a powerpoint presentation or you want to download more and more topics you please visit this website ilopathology.com and please don't forget to like comment and subscribe please do share thank you very much